I'm Brayden Primo. And I'm Francisco Yala. And you're watching The, the Jungle. Jungle. Isn't spring break coming up? Yeah, spring break starts tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Here's Carter with a segment about spring break. I'm just going to be working pretty much all the time. That's what I do. I'm going to go see my grandpa. I'm going to go to Hayes. Go see my grandparents. I'm going to go play some basketball at the basketball court and hopefully have some sleepovers with my friends. Uh, I'm going to go to the park and play some basketball for a little bit. And then probably go to Salina, eat at Hong Kong for a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I'm probably going to be like doing outdoor stuff, like riding my motorcycle and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to D.C. with my family uh, pretty much the whole time, and we're going to go tour the White House and all the places in D.C. Okay, so I'm going to go to the park and play basketball, probably have a sleepover with some of my friends, and probably go to Texas. I'm so excited for spring break. Yeah, let's you and I kick it off with the spring play tonight. There's a play tonight? Yeah. Let's go over to Clayton and Riley to learn more. Hi, I'm Riley Westgate and I'm here with Miss Blaine. We are doing a segment in Catch Watch called Women in War. And I have a few questions for you. Okay. I was wondering if you could explain the Women in War play. Absolutely. Um, the basic gist, we're looking at history and the role that women have played as they have been supporters and, um, and then eventually even soldiers in war. So it really is gonna go back all the way to even the Revolutionary War against England and work through the Civil War into World War I, Korean War, Desert Storm. Um, but the various roles that women have filled, yes, they've been wives and mothers and sisters and they've supported, but they've also taken on jobs, industrial positions, um, They've gone to war even before they were soldiers, so they worked as, I never even knew this, donut gals. So they, oh, they wow. delivered donuts and coffee to the men on the front lines, things like that that I'd never heard of until this play. Hi, I'm Roller Whiskey. I'm here with Justice Alexander. She's a character in the Woman in War play. So, Justice, I have a question for you. I was wondering what your character was in the play. Okay, so I actually have two characters. The first one is Helen Sullivan. She is a housewife waiting for her fiance to come back home so that way she can they can actually get married. She's sitting at home, they're going through like all the process of what women had to deal with during the war. My second character is the oldest our mother. She is a mother and she sits at home and she writes these letters to her sons and she's basically explaining to everybody what happened to her sons and why she has to go through all this stuff in the process of what mothers have to go through every single day while their sons are at war. And then we have a couple characters because it hops around in time so we have a couple characters that never interact with each other because they're in different time periods and so they come to center stage and tell their stories with different costumes and different accents to differentiate between other characters. Every actor in this play plays at least two characters, so it was really fun to kind of figure out how we were gonna differentiate between them and how we were going to work in costume changes and set changes and use different props to tell different stories. We do suggest that the audience, that you be 13 or older, uh, not necessarily because it's all too graphic, but because there is more serious content and it's, a more mature show, so I'm not sure that audiences under the age of 13 would necessarily enjoy it as much as Matilda or Charlie Brown or things that we've done previously. Wow, that sounds like an amazing play. Agreed. What is wrong with you? I need Kyle to lift me up. What are you talking about? Isn't he into lifting? Power lifting? Yeah, I don't know what that is. I'll let Kyle explain that to you. Here is Kyle for a segment about power lifting. I'm Kyle McFadden, here with Mr. Etcher to talk about state powerlifting. So, what is powerlifting? Uh, powerlifting, we go to meets, typically are held on Saturdays, um, and everybody's given three attempts at a new max, essentially. Um, they go hang clean or power clean, uh, bench press, and squat. Uh, most of the students that do compete are in a weights class. Uh, we've taken some kids that aren't in a weights class before that come in before or after school. So, how do you feel about state powerlifting coming up? Uh, you know, we have some guys and some girls that have been competing pretty well um, week to week. 
Um, right now, we're actually just in the process of trying to see if we can get some more um, students signed up. We're currently at 11. Uh, I believe last year we took somewhere around 20. Um, and the year before that, I think we only took eight probably. Um, but as far as the competition itself, um, you know, we have yourself and Jace and JJ um, and Keegan. Um, those guys have all pretty much placed at all the meets we've gone to. Um, so this will be a chance to see how those guys compete um, against some of the strongest lifters in 3A. Um, and then when you look at some of the girls we have, um, Nevea and Jory. Um, Nevea has done a good job of, of placing at multiple meets. Um, as far as Jory, she's our only freshman that we take with us. Um, but I think every meet we've been at, she's gotten new maxes. So, um, you know, it's the challenge of competition, but also seeing if we can have some personal growth. Uh, we get there, we check in. Um, they have several different racks set up, usually in stations um, with numbers. Um, we've had meets with four stations. We've had meets with six, um, and they rotate through. Um, as they work through, everybody's divided up into weight classes, um, and as they work through and raise the weight, um, so, you know, you, for example, Kyle, uh, they get to 225 pounds and say it's Kyle's turn, then Kyle would jump in and do his 225. If he gets it, he gets another opportunity to lift. Um, and they get three total lifts. So can people still sign up for state? Yes, we are. We're currently signing up. Um, I'm actually working on this week, um, you know, some of the final ones. Um, the meet is the 25th. The deadline is actually the, not until the 21st. Um, we're trying to get ours done by the end of the week um, just so um, for transportation purposes. But um, people are still allowed to sign up. Um, people that aren't in a weights class, if they're interested, uh, just need to talk to me. And if, if they want to go, then we can figure out how we can make that work. No wonder Kyle is excited. He's a beefcake. Beefcake! Yes, indeed he is. Do you know what the word of the week is? Beefcake? No. Let's have Kyle and Mr. Rundus explain with word of the week. Word, word, word of the week with Mr. Rundus and Kyle. This is word of the week with Kyle McFadden and Gene Rundus. Today's word of the week is bulwark. A bulwark is a ship's wall or something that protects from harm. Well, as the traveling pirate teacher of the month <laughs> with trophy, I've got to tell you kids, your education is a bulwark against unemployment and starvation. Our graduate kids. Wish I had a parrot. <laughs> that was a great segment. Well, Mr. Rundus was great. Kyle, not so much. Yes, thanks, Mr. Rundus. That's all for this week on The, the Jungle. Jungle.